Hi, my name is Scott Sunquist, and I've been working at Gordon Conwell Theological Seminary for about a year now. Well, not quite a year. And uh, I teach in the area of Christian history, global history, and in mission. Uh, missiology is his uh, title. Uh, this little talk is, comes from an experience I had in 2007 in Hong Kong. I ran into a scholar from Wuhan, China, and he found out I was from the States, and he said, Oh, Dr. Sunquist, uh, so good to meet you. I had no idea. I said, you had no idea what? I had no idea that all of the terms that we use for physics and mathematics and even music uh, came from uh, missionaries from America. I said, really? Uh, I knew that. He said, you do? How did you know that? And so then, then uh, it takes me back to a story when I was doing research on a missionary who went to Pittsburgh Seminary when I was teaching there. So I thought, He's a missionary from Western Pennsylvania. I'd like to find out about him. His name was Calvin Wilson Mateer. And as I was researching Calvin Wilson Mateer, a good Presbyterian name, Calvin, I found out that he was married to Julia. And uh, she taught at a school in Western Pennsylvania. He was teaching at a private school. They felt called to mission. And they went overseas to China during the Civil War. Uh, they left in 1863 and arrived at the end of 1863 in Southern China. They went to southern China, but it was too hot. There was a lot of disease there. So like many other missionaries, as well as travelers, they ended up going north in Shandong province. I've written an article about Shandong province is the most important province for religions in China, but that's another lecture. But at this point, what happened when they got to Shandong province, the father, Calvin Wilson Mateer, or the husband, Calvin Wilson Mateer, realized that he wanted to plant churches in China. So he traveled all around for about eight or nine months he would travel and his poor wife Julia, they'd only been married a few years, sat back and made home in an abandoned temple. It was a temple to Guan Yin, the Chinese uh, goddess of mercy in, in China. And uh, the temple was abandoned. Uh, as with many religions, it grows and it declines. And this was a period of decline of Guan Yin worship in Shandong. So Julia stays home in the temple Calvin is traveling around, and over the course of eight years, he traveled over 15,000 miles on horseback, donkey back, and walking, and was basically a failure. Uh, didn't plant many churches. Julia stays back. She doesn't know what to do, so she sees these boys running around, so she starts a little school. And the little school is held in the temple of Guanyin. Now, if we fast forward, that little school ended up becoming Shandong University it was the first major college and then university in the country of China. It was started by a woman, <laughs> Julia, not by the man. The husband made the mistake of traveling all around, thought he was going to plant churches all over the place. She stayed put and she decided that she should teach in ways that are appropriate for Chinese culture. So what did that mean? Well, taught basic Western curriculum of physics, chemistry, math and everything, but she also taught uh, Confucian classics because she said every young Chinese student should learn their own culture well. And she translated everything into Chinese. As a matter of fact, the Chinese, the Mandarin lesson book that she started to develop and then her husband would come back with new terms. Over the course of 30 years, they, it was constantly reprinted and it became the standard book for teaching Chinese for all missionaries and foreign workers in China. Now, why do I go into all of this? Because I think it's fascinating that her love of Chinese culture caused her to teach only in Chinese. This was beginning in 1863, and she died at the turn of the century, or the, right before the end of the 19th century. During all of that time, she was only teaching in Chinese. Later missionaries, who were greater imperialists, insisted on teaching in English. But she taught only in Chinese, the strongest school, and she translated terms for music. She wrote the first book on Western music for China. So if Chinese, if you see, ever see a Chinese orchestra or Chinese playing violin and piano, that's because of her emphasis on classical Western music, teaching that in China. So you have this mixture of different cultures there. So when my friend in, in uh, 2007 said, I had no idea what he was actually unpacking was the fact that all of the early study of Western culture was made available, Western education was made available basically through a woman, Julia Wilson Mateer. And many people say, I had no idea, now you do. 
Listen, if you'd like more information about how to take uh, online classes at Gordon-Conwell, simply email us at admissions at gordonconwell.edu.